it's a symptom of the knowledge of good and evil, right? Where you come with a, 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 a template of what is needed to have life and what is against you having life. And now you live by that and you judge your life by that, right? That's what God's trying to set us all free from. Because listen, I don't know if you realize it, um, it's a formidable thing for us to be in a world where we see death all the time if we're living by the knowledge of good and evil. It becomes real difficult to enjoy life or to have peace if we're all the time judging our lives by whether or not we think we see death or we think we see life because we're in a world where there's death everywhere. <laughs> that becomes a formidable thing. So God's like, we're going to pluck this death out of their conscience. We're going to remove this accusation from their conscience. He sees what's happening to us, and he's like, listen, man, we got to give these guys a different place to reason from about their lives. They're like using math equations, and when they calculate their lives, they're all the time coming to the conclusion that it is not very good. And that is messing them up. We got to give them, we got to come in there with a different kind of equation that when they work their life, or when they work their thoughts about their life and they add it up like an equation, that they're going to come out with something that equals they have a very good life. we got to get that in them, right? Because the death that Adam brought into the world is now mixing with their knowledge that death is evil, and it's taking them captive and tormenting them. And it's bringing forth the fruit of death in them. we got to do something to pluck that out, to take an ax to the root of that, because it's always uncovering their nakedness. And not only is it uncovering their nakedness, it's bad enough if it was doing that, but it's also accusing me to them. Because in the day you find yourself naked, if you know like God is on the scene, coming like gangbusters to clothe upon you, you're still feeling pretty good. You're still feeling like, yeah. But now if you look at your nakedness and you judge that you don't have what you need to have life, and that same knowledge is accusing God in your heart, telling you God's far from you, telling you God isn't coming for you, telling you that God has judged your life as evil. Now you're really out in the cold. Right? And so God's like, let's do something to cleanse their conscience. Let's do something that no matter what they encounter in the world, their conscience will excuse them from the death in the world. That's why Paul come and said the Gentiles not having the law had a law written on their heart, their conscience either accusing or excusing. God said, let's fill their conscience with a knowing or a knowledge that when they see the death in the world, their conscience will excuse them and it will excuse us. And they'll begin to know that we're with them and that the life that they have from us is very good. Right? Hallelujah. In Philippians 3.8, and there's a bunch of, if you look in the scriptures, there's a bunch of places where it talks about the knowledge of him, the knowledge of the Son of God, the knowledge of Christ Jesus, the knowledge of uh, the, Son of Man, the Son of Man. It's peppered throughout all the scriptures. I'm going to mention two of them. In Philippians 3.8, the Apostle Paul talks about the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus. The excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 13, Paul builds a masterful explanation of God as life giver, really. And Paul says in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 13, he says, we're perfected unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ by the knowledge of the Son of God. And I'm contextualizing there. He says, I'm going to say it again. We're perfected unto the measure of of the stature of the fullness of Christ by the knowledge of the Son of God. Right? Now the knowledge of the Son of God, this is where I think Western Christianity and maybe all over the whole world, I'm just a Westerner, so I can really only speak for us. We've, Jesus is a historical figure. It's a historical fact that Jesus existed. There's no doubt about that. And so I know that Jesus is a real man that lived and died and rose again. But what we've majored on is just a historical Jesus. And so when we think about the knowledge of the Son of God, we tend to just think about the fact that this guy existed. And then we call that faith, whether or not this guy existed or not, right? But the knowledge of the Son of God is not just talking about a historical idea that Jesus actually existed. That, that's the beginning of it, because you have to first believe he is before you start wondering who he is, right? That's the beginning of it. But the knowledge of the Son of God 
or the knowledge of Christ Jesus talks about a knowledge or a belief or a faith that God ministers to people through the Son of God. It talks about God coming and ministering something to all of us, and the thing that He used to minister that to us is the Son of God. That's what the knowledge of the Son of God is. It talks about God ministering to us the word of a life that overcomes death, and He ministers that word to us through Jesus. Right? That's what it's talking about. Now, there's a reason why He wants to come and minister to us a different knowledge. And there's no accident that the scriptures start off talking about the knowledge of good and evil, right? And then what that knowledge does to us. So God comes to minister to us a different kind of idea, a different kind of a logic, so to speak, the Logos. That's why Jesus is called the Word from God, the Word that is God, that was with God, that is in God. God came to talk to us. He came to minister to us something that could stand opposed to the knowledge of good and evil. And the thing He came to minister to us was the Word of His life, the Word of a life that overcomes death. And that thing that He used to minister that life to us is His Son. That's why it says, in Jesus was life. And the life was the light of men. Jesus is the light that entered the earth that lights up every man with the knowledge of God or the true knowledge of God, the kind of a knowledge that would take an ax to the root of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and pluck it out of our hearts. We would no longer judge our lives as evil in the day the world uncovers our nakedness, but we could still judge our lives as very good in the day the world uncovers our nakedness because we could behold our lives in Jesus, seated at the right hand of God, clothed upon with more immortality, having had his mortality clothed upon with immortality, and we could see that as a sign that we're not separated from what we need for life, but that God has drawn near to us to clothe upon our nakedness, and we could say our life is very good. 